So lobster, in a way, was already a symbol within art. So, and I was always inspired by symbols because as an artist, a symbol is a great way of communicating to people. And so I, I basically started um, drawing lobsters on, on suits that I would wear and making lobster chairs and lobster designs. And then people started calling me the lobster man. So then I just sort of became the lobster man. And I started painting myself as a lobster man. And now my whole work is, evol evolves around the lobster. I taking my dialogue with, with pop art and art history and I'm re retelling it in these very grand old master like scenes um, but with very like hyper pop, hyper saturated um, reflection of today's crazy um, Instagram culture of digital media. My work is also very, it's very much a mix of lowbrow and highbrow. Things that are everyday objects like Coke cans or, or Francis Bacon heads or Van Gogh heads. It's like very much this sort of, this meeting of the low and high. Like I love doing Van Gogh heads because the technique of Van Gogh presents a funny way of representing, you know, a figure. So I like to, and also it's very recognizable. So it's almost like a brand in a way, a bit like Nike or Adidas. It's a very recognizable symbol. So I can use these symbols in this language as my own, in my own way to reinvent and turn these things upside down and, and reinvent art history effectively through the eyes of the lobster. Like over hundreds of years, people have entered this dialogue, this conversation, which is in libraries and very complex. And so any individual can in a way engage with this philosophical conversation and reinvent this conversation and disagree and offer a new point of view. And I think I love that freedom that, uh, that the subject allows people. So I was always very interested in Francis Bacon's painting. But I wanted to, by, by studying it and starting to paint it again, I realized that I could sort of reinvent the aesthetic and almost turn it inside out. Take a painting which was quite tortured and actually quite dark, even though it was brilliant, it was quite dark, and I could sort of turn it inside out, take a similar formula, but turn it inside out and make it almost a happy ex ex existential painting. It's almost a bit like Pixar Studios. I try and apply these rendering techniques to the processing, and then I take that, that, the blueprints of that and then repaint that. And, and it becomes a dialogue between technology and painting, where the limitations of the hand can be aided by the computer, but also still brought back to the hand at the end.